Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today on National Numeracy Day for this session. We'll be looking at some simple steps parents, carers, other family members or guardians can take to help their children succeed in maths learning. Engagement in maths learning from adults outside of school is crucial to helping children develop positive attitudes towards maths and positive attitudes about maths are at the core of success. According to the Department for Education, parental involvement has a large and positive impact on children's learning. Other research has shown the effect of parental engagement at home was stronger than that of either socioeconomic status or parents' level of education. We know that for many parents, supporting children with maths feels a huge challenge. Many adults feel anxious about maths, find the idea of working through maths homework stressful, or just don't feel confident enough in their skills to be able to help effectively. The good news is you don't need to be a qualified maths teacher or an expert in the subject to be able to help. There are some simple tips for engaging positively with your children's learning. These include pointing out maths in everyday life, being positive about maths, praising children for effort rather than talent, and improving your own number confidence. We're going to look at each of these tips in a bit more detail. Sitting around the kitchen table with textbooks and worksheets isn't the only way that you can engage positively with your children's maths learning. That's where finding the maths in everyday life proves really helpful. This gives you the opportunity to do maths around the house and develop basic number skills in a fun way. It also shows children that maths is important in everyday life, making them more likely to see the point in learning at school. There are lots of examples of ways you can do maths together in daily life even around the house during the current coronavirus restrictions. For example, when cooking, you'll be measuring out ingredients and you may have the opportunity to talk about fractions. You can use time, plan journeys, and ask your children to help make sure you arrive on time. You can use money, practice counting coins, or working out the best deals online, or you can simply play games. Card games and board games present the opportunity for counting scores, or talking about probability of drawing particular cards. There are many more examples. You can find out more on the Family Maths Toolkit website. To make it fun, why not link it to your children's hobbies and interests? Whatever they enjoy in their spare time, there will be numbers involved somewhere. Let's look at football as an example. How can you bring maths into watching football or playing football with your children? There are lots of ways, and here are just a few examples. Use the league table to work out how many points a team might need to win the league. Use the cup draw as an opportunity to talk about probability. Help children understand distances by talking about the penalty spot being 12 yards from the goal. Or simply help them to recognise shapes on the pitch, such as the centre circle. As your children get older, they may start thinking about the careers they want. This is a great opportunity to highlight the importance of maths to them. There are no jobs that don't require maths and getting them to think about the numbers they'll need in their dream career can really help to keep motivation to learn maths in school and show them that they will need it beyond. For example, if they now feel inspired to become one of our NHS heroes, they'll need a good grasp of numbers. Here are just a few tasks they'll encounter. Medication calculations, taking patient readings and measurements, understanding patient data, communicating risk of certain treatments, and scheduling and time management. Our next tip is to be positive about maths. That sounds very simple, but many of us unintentionally say negative things about maths, and this can affect the way our children think about the subject and therefore how they will engage with their learning. Let's think about some of the things we often say or hear people saying. Perhaps you hear people say, I was never any good at maths and it did me no harm. This is very commonly said and seems to be an attempt at reassuring a child who's finding it difficult, but it's not necessarily helpful. A statement like this implies that being bad at maths is nothing to worry about and that maths isn't important in later life. It doesn't encourage learning, rather it implies that someone who was never any good at maths can't become good at maths. Perhaps try saying something like, I struggled with maths at school. It's OK to find it hard, but we should keep trying. You may sometimes say, it's okay, you're more of a creative person than a maths person. By saying they're more creative, it feels like boxing children into particular skills, and this can lead them to focus on things that they see themselves as good at in order to earn praise and feel good. 
There is no such thing as a maths person. We can all become numerate. It also implies that if you are good at some things, that stops you being good at others. This is not the case. It's perfectly possible to have creative skills and number skills. Perhaps try saying, it's okay that you're finding that hard. That's part of learning. When you're helping your children with their maths homework, it could be very tempting to say something like, this one's easy. You should be able to get this right. It's usually an attempt to encourage children, but actually it may make them feel worse about the problem. It's more useful to acknowledge struggle and highlight that everyone finds things hard sometimes, but to encourage them to keep going and persist with the problem. Instead, try something like, okay, you haven't got it right straight away, but let's have another go together. Here are some general pointers for talking positively. Ensure your language shows that math is important rather than undermining its value. Try to use language that encourages children to realise that it's not the case that they either know the answer or they don't. By working at it, they can find the answer. Normalise finding things hard and normalise mistakes as part of learning. It's OK to get it wrong the first time. That doesn't mean you can't do it. And try using positive language about getting to the answer rather than negative language about mistakes. Praising a perceived talent is a very easy thing to do but it's actually more helpful to children to praise the effort that has gone into getting the right answer. This shows them that it's hard work, not natural intellect, which leads to success in maths. For example, we can be very tempted to say something like, well done for getting that right, you're so clever. It's a way of giving positive reinforcement and feels like good encouragement for the child. However, as well as implying that the skills are a result of natural ability, it also has consequences when children don't get it right. If when you're right, that means you're clever, does that mean if you hit a topic where you find it hard and get it wrong, you're not so clever? Instead of saying, well done, you're so clever, try saying, well done for sticking at it with all those tricky questions. The hard work has paid off. Whilst you don't need to be a maths expert to do any of these things, being confident with numbers can help it feel more comfortable for you to work on maths with your children. Brushing up on your skills doesn't have to mean going back to the classroom. Use National Numeracy Day to start your journey to improved confidence with numbers by registering for the National Numeracy Challenge. I know that the idea of doing maths learning online might generate great anxiety for many parents, but the challenge offers a way to learn more comfortably. When you register, you'll be asked to take a skills check, but you can do this at your own pace and there are no time limits. And all of the questions will be everyday maths questions only asking you to understand the maths you really need in work and everyday life. So there'll be no algebra, trigonometry or simultaneous equations. After taking the quick skills check, you'll get a range of resources at the right level for you. Choose the ones that suit you best. We encourage you to log in and out as you go and break up your learning into manageable chunks and focus only on your weak spots when you visit the learning resources as they are linked to the questions you got wrong in your skills check. You may still be sceptical of the impact of improving your own numeracy skills, but don't just take it from me. Here is a story from Jason, who's from Yorkshire, a dad who used the National Numeracy Challenge to improve his number skills and really felt the benefits. <laughs> I grew up in the 80s and back then it was you're either good at maths or you're good at subjects and you wasn't, I got left behind. I used to feel scared of numbers, intimidated by them because I was always told you're in the slow group, you're not going to amount to much. Your kids come to you and ask you for help with your homework and you can't provide the answers. You're there to provide for your kids, you provide shelter, you provide home provide food but you can't provide the knowledge. To overcome your fears you have to face them head on and that's what I did with the numeracy challenge and now they don't intimidate me, they don't scare me, we're friends, me and numbers are friends again. I really enjoy doing the homework with the kids. We get a buzz out of doing the homework together, I'm learning stuff from them just as I'm helping them with their work because I don't want them to be afraid of numbers like I was at school. I can't say enough how much confidence it gives you, you feel seven feet tall. I'm a definite numbers person. I am now. I wasn't before, but numbers are my thing. In summary, here's a reminder of our top tips to make sure you're supporting positive attitudes towards numeracy in your children. 
pointing out maths in everyday life, being positive about maths, praising children for effort rather than talent, and improving your own number confidence. Thank you very much for joining us today. If you have any questions, please do join me on Twitter for a live Q&A. Tweet your questions to at nat underscore numeracy. Thank you for tuning in and goodbye.